one. I just made my first one the other day. It took two days, and that was it. It was incredible. It was very big. It was pretty soft. That's it. It was, uh, it was great. I got to play with stitches on my new machine, my fan. So it was wonderful. Thank you. And I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, a little background on myself. Um, I've worked in independently owned mold shops for about six years. Um, and one of them was a sewing machine dealership. Uh, I've been teaching this as a class since 2001, and I have had a pretty consistently full class, um, often with a wait list. Uh, I've taught it to 12 year olds, I've taught it to an 80 year old, I've taught it to everybody in between, all experience levels. It's a great beginner class. Um, And you're just going to keep repeating that process for however many cuts are in the project that you're working on. For our little bitty, um, we call this our short, short cake. <laughs> I call it a short cake quilt. Well, <laughs> so for our short cake quilt here, it only has two cuts you can see in there. In the book, it goes from three cuts up to six cuts. And there's even a chapter on designing your own cuts. It's so easy. So. Uh, yeah, we'll show you some of the quotes from the book here. This one here is a five cut, and it's a, quite a bit more crazy looking. And then you can see on the back side of this one that I used all different fat quarters again for the back, so you really have a reversible looking quilt here. Um, and this last one here is our six cut quilt, and to me it's really crazy looking. Yep, it goes so fast. Yep, this is as close as you go. Uh, and so I'm going to get right to that. Um, the nice thing about this process, though, uh, is you're only making one cut at a time. So even though you get these weird little funny shaped bits, you're never actually dealing with that. You're only dealing with two large chunks of fabric and one straight seam at a time. And we don't even match up our seams, which is another reason this is great for beginners. I encourage people to make sure their seams are off because it just makes it look more like a crazy quilt when you're done. So um, you've made your, that's all of your cuts. You're ready to uh, move on to basting. You're all familiar with basting. It's just your same old thing. Your back should be a little bit bigger than your top. Same for the batting. Use your safety pins to put together. You just Probably never had this simple before. Instead of trying to find room to lay out your twin or queen size quilt, you're just dealing with 18 inch squares right now. So you're going to um, layer those up, and then the machine quilting is even easier than that, if you can believe it. Uh, we just use our decorative stitching and follow right over our same process of making the quilt. Now, those fabric and leaves are a great thing to hold on to if you're thinking about teaching for a class. It's good for explaining the sashing part, but also, if you're a shop owner, you can just leave it on the front counter and you'll get a million questions of what the heck is this weird thing. And that kind of sells the class in itself, just explaining what it is. Um, but also, you're gonna be selling um, your fat quarter packets like crazy, because like I said, the rest of the quotes in the book are all larger size, um, and it can be intimidating for a twin size and a clean size quote. Uh, for someone to pick out 20 or 30 different fabrics. So if you've got two dozen kids, that's right. I love work on that one. So like I said, I love this rotary cutter, the 60 millimeter. Uh, probably a lot of your customers don't have this one yet, but it is fantastic for this quilt where I can cut out multiple layers of batting at one time. Uh, also, when you're doing bigger size squares, selling your 20 and a half inch square rulers, I couldn't get one on the airplane, but they are great, they make quick work, I can cut out my batting for this in 10 minutes. Um, also, um, you can be selling a lot of different needles uh, because an old sewing machine needle is not going to hold up to all of this decorative stitching. Um, also, depending on what threads you're using, I have my students use uh, the metallic needles or the embroidery needles if they're having problems with shredding of their thread. And so I say is you're actually going to be able to sell your batting in this class. I don't know if you guys have this trouble where you teach a class and you make the top and then they go to some discount store and buy the batting, but you actually need your batting to finish this class and I get so many people that come and don't believe so they don't bring their batting, they actually come to the quilt shop and buy the batting. So that's the nice thing about it also. Um, Is that regular threaders? Um, I, well it depends, she mostly use Silky, I use 
polyester, rayon, whatever is nearby. So just, I like the shiny, but I also, you know, cotton works too. You can see this um, one with the black thread, it's just plain black cotton thread. So, um, but also if any of you are sewing institute dealerships, um, <laughs> this, you'll get what I call in this class, stitch at me, where you're doing the part of the class where you're working on the clothing, and you kind of see what your neighbor's doing and the stitches that they've got. And, that's a great place to jump in there and let them know what's available, the next step up in sewing machines. So that's another uh, good sale for this class. Um. <laughs>